New bikes, it's always exciting. So the plan is to build a new gravel setup with the DI2 GRX and uh, an endurance road setup, something which will hopefully equip me for training ahead of Race Across America, which um, for me is one of those sort of bucket list events. Like I've never in my entire career stood on the start line of a of an event, you know, I've spent the last 15 years trying to smash world records and world firsts, but uh, I've been, you know, ultimately going out there. I mean, I was inspired by a kid when, when I was a kid watching like Ellen MacArthur sail around the world. So the idea of cycling around the world is a similar sort of task where, you know, it is a record, the strict rules, but you know, people go at totally different you know, times. Whereas the idea of actually being in, a, in an organized race, I've never, I've never been that attracted to, but having having done all these big expeds around the world twice, length of Africa, you know, the length of the Americas from Alaska to Tierra del Fuego, I kind of got to the point where I'm like, I'm actually enjoying adventure riding again, getting onto the, the off-road, the gravel, a lot more than ultra endurance road, which was my obsession for probably a decade. And then, you know, just thinking, what are those bucket list events. What are those things that if I was standing on the start line with a field of athletes that I'd like to do and they are things like Ram, Race Across America, Cape Epic, some of these other big ultras and some stuff closer to, to, to home as well. But the thing I'm quite excited about with building up the new gravel bike today is there is stuff I've been riding recently that even five years ago I would have only ever looked at on a cross-country bike. You know, sometimes even an enduro bike and there, there, there you are smashing it on a drop handlebar gravel bike. So I just think the evolution of bikes over the last five, 10 years has been so exciting. And coming off the back of that last 18,000 mile race around the planet where my entire obsession was endurance road, it's quite nice to just go, well, let's, you know, let's let's build the fun back into cycling. You don't. It doesn't just need to be about you know the physical performance and smashing out the big miles. And I remember chatting through with you, going, "Well, the world record for getting around planet Earth is 123 days. How do we do it in less than 80?" And it's like, if you want to break a record, that's one thing. If you want to smash it by nearly 40%, you've got to like, you've got to like rewrite the rule books. You've got to be like pretty bold about every part of the planning, the training, the build. And uh, it's led to some pretty interesting conversations. Thinking back to the, the Africa bike, which was the first like really racing setup that you built, built for me. Um, one of the things that I really enjoyed was daft conversations about I'm on my own for like 41 days the length of Africa and I was like if I get everything nicked and I get into trouble how do I how do I have a stash of dollar, yeah. dollars yeah. and passports <laughs> and you came up with an awesome solution what was that I'm sitting not in the basically utilizing the seat tube I think was it not to yeah. stuff all your stuff and then doing a wee grommet to expand it was pretty much something I'm sure it was like was it Easy Rider maybe or something where they put all the money in the tank in tubes? <laughs> Similar scenario, but like you're saying, you've got limited space on bikes to kind of carry emergency stuff. So from our point of view, it was always about making sure that you didn't have any mechanical issues. But how do you also prepare for the unknown, like, which is it's a different kind of skill set realistically, isn't it? Like, but I remember the conversations I had with you, Gav, and you are like, it's about reliability. If you want to smash these records, you've got to just use the best componentry on the market. And also like carry to Cape Town, 6,000 miles. You know, I, I ended up recharging the, the DI2 twice, the length of a continent. And you know, I charged it up using just a, you know, a small portable battery pack, which you would recharge your mobile phone. And the simplicity of riding electronic when you're doing massive, massive hours. I always say, especially when you're doing endurance road and you're stretched out on the tri bars, it's more like you're playing in a, an old fashioned Game Boy. It doesn't really come into its own until you've done 
tens and then hundreds of hours, you yeah. know. I mean, from a mechanical point, Mark, for me, it was always about like, well, you're not gonna get any cable stretch, you know what I mean? It's download apps, you can tune in stuff, replaceable cables you can carry, super lightweight. You don't really need any tools, bar a specific tool to pull it out and into a particular device. So there's that element of it. But you're right, often customers will come in and ask, oh, how long does a electronic bike last its charge and you know to give them information like well, you can run a continent right with two charges it's quite a tangible thing for them to think they're like oh I thought I was gonna have to charge it every day in in layman terms what's the what's the advantage of the GRX because you know it boasts uh, as being the first sort of gravel specific yeah. group set like it and you know, anecdotally, as a, as a bike rider, I can talk about the ratios that yeah. gives me and the ratios durability. are really personal as well, because obviously fitness and what you're going to do. Straight off the bat for me was just the actual uh, lever itself, the ergonomics, the, the slight flare, the flash front flatness to it, like the tactile sort of aspect of it was really cool. And then you've then got whether or not you're going to go, which is often a really big debate, a single one by at the front or you're going to run a double at the front because always everyone's you know less moving components um, or lightness could be a factor in that, that individual sort of brief if you like and with the ratios that are available now you know there's not that much in it you yeah. know, if you're again it's really dependent on what you're going to do with the bike well i think that's a massively important point because if if people haven't done gravel riding before and they may be reading about it in magazines, they're thinking of like American style gravel yeah. riding where you're doing big, dry, forestry tracks, trails, gra gravel being gravel. Whereas, you know, what I end up doing in Scotland most of the time is mountain biking on a gravel bike. Yeah. What's the fundamental difference between a GRX and a, and a Durace? Um, lots, you know what I mean? Basically the Durace and Altegra basically is a race driven performance road group set. So seals, bearings, the actual material that's involved, the stresses and designs are slightly different. Whereas the GRX is more robust, bigger bearings, longer setup throws. I mean, the electronic ones, it's quite a masterpiece if you have it, well, we'll get a wee look at it when we start building. Some shots of the actual mechs are, are pretty amazing bits of technology just sitting in the back of your bike. Owen and Gav have done a beautiful job overnight building the bike and they've let me, this is trust, <laughs> Put on the bottle cages. <laughs> Wasn't allowed to touch the bike, but I uh, I can't mess this bit up. Right, first ride. Gonna have some fun, Mark. Thanks, buddy. Pleasure. <laughs>